Over 40 years ago, the Soviet Venera probes ventured into the deadly atmosphere of our neighboring planet. They transmitted the first fascinating images from a world dominated by heat, pressure, and sulfuric acid. Then the probes fell silent forever. Their shells remained on the surface, and the question remains whether anything is left of them today. What did temperatures of over 460 degrees Celsius, pressure more than 90 times higher than on Earth, and toxic sulfuric acid vapors do to the former heroes of steel and titanium? When the Soviet Union sent its last Venera probes to Venus in the early 1980s, it was the culmination of a decades-long exceptional mission. Since the 1960s, engineers had been trying to reach Earth's sister planet. Venus was a destination that both fascinated and deterred with its extreme conditions. In 1982, the Venera 13 and 14 missions achieved a milestone. Both probes landed on the surface and transmitted the first color images from a world that until then had only appeared as a mysterious, cloud-covered star in the sky. It's nearly impossible to see through the dense clouds with telescopes. Therefore, until these images were taken, Venus remains something of a mystery. Not only is Venus shrouded in clouds, but it is also not really a place for visitors. Its environment is one of the most hostile in the entire solar system. Temperatures rise to over 460 degrees Celsius, hotter than an oven, and even hot enough to melt lead. The atmospheric pressure is almost 100 times higher than on Earth and comparable to the pressure in the deep ocean. Added to this are clouds of toxic sulfuric acid, which immediately attack any metal surface and can corrode any technology in a matter of seconds. In this harsh environment, the Venera probes survived for little more than an hour, and it was a miracle that technical equipment capable of withstanding these conditions could be constructed at all. The hour of landing was a triumph in several respects. For the Soviet Union, the successful landing was an important advantage in the competition with the USA. Furthermore, it was almost unbelievable that the probes could actually survive in this world and send back data. The Venera probes showed us an almost strangely familiar landscape of broken rocks, flat plains, and a sky glowing an eerie orange. The images were not just scientific data, but the first real glimpse of the surface of another planet. At that time, there were already legends about beautiful women who might live on Venus, or about a kind of poisonous paradise garden. The sight of the stony wasteland was a shock, and at the same time, enchanted people. More than 40 years after the landing, we are investigating the question of what remains of the probes today. Could parts of the metal have survived? Are the last remnants of the holes or technical parts still visible? the most dramatic hours of the Venera missions. It's actually unbelievable, because out of 28 missions launched, only 15 reached their destination. Some burned up during launch, others fell silent en route, or flew past Venus without delivering any data. Three examples illustrate the harshness of these endeavors particularly clearly. Venera 1 lost radio contact after only a few weeks in 1961 and remained silent forever. Venera 2 came close to Venus in 1965, but overheated and was unable to transmit any information. Two years later, Venera 4 became the first probe to enter the atmosphere of Venus, but the enormous pressure crushed the lander before it even came close to the ground. Despite these devastating setbacks, later Venera missions succeeded in sending the first real images and data from the surface of Venus. The Soviet Venera missions are a chapter of courage and technical audacity. Engineers used the many failed attempts in the 1960s to continuously improve their designs. Their courage was rewarded as the successes of the later probes exceeded all expectations and made space history. In 1979, the time had come for the first time and Venera 7 became the first probe to survive entry into the atmosphere. It landed on a plane near the night side of Venus and transmitted data for 23 minutes, a milestone that proved that the surface was reachable. Venera 9 and 10 delivered the first black and white photos of the surface of Venus in 1980. They landed on rocky plains where the pressure was almost 100 times higher than on Earth and temperatures exceeded 460 degrees Celsius. The images from the two missions showed clearly angular rocks under an orange sky for the first time. This was the first direct view of a world that until then had only been considered a mysterious evening star. The most dramatic missions were Venera 13 and Venera 14 in 1982. 
Both probes landed on the eastern hemisphere of Venus and in regions full of broken basalt slabs. The conditions were deadly heat that could melt lead and an atmosphere of carbon dioxide and sulfuric acid immediately attacked the steel and titanium probes. Nevertheless, the probe survived for over an hour, longer than any other Venus probe had previously been active on the surface. Venera 13 and 14 transmitted the first color photos of the surface of Venus, showing a landscape of flat stones and confirming the chemical composition of the soil. Venera 13 even sent the sound of muffled noise back to Earth. This made Venus audible for the first time, and researchers must have held their breath when they first heard the sounds created by the wind beneath the dense atmosphere. All subsequent missions, such as Venera 11, 12, 15, and 16, all contributed to the success by collecting atmospheric data or taking radar images of the surface. These probes were machines sent into hell, and yet they survived. They showed us a world that resembles Earth, and yet is completely destroyed, a planet that may once have been hospitable to life but is now a nightmare of fire and pressure. Their achievement remains unique. No other country has since provided images of the surface of Venus. The Venera missions are thus true highlights and monuments of space history. The Last Witnesses of Venus What remains in the hell of steel and titanium? The Venera probes were constructed from robust metal alloys such as titanium and stainless steel supplemented by thick protective layers and high temperature insulation. The engineers had to choose materials that could withstand the extreme conditions on Venus. The landing capsules themselves were spherical structures with reinforced walls to withstand the enormous pressure. Inside, the electronics were shielded by special materials and coating systems, while outside, special insulation and titanium alloys protected against acid attacks and heat. Antennas and cameras were integrated in such a way that they could function for up to an hour despite the extreme conditions. The probes were delicate spacecraft on the one hand, and at the same time, steel-hard survival capsules that, after years of construction, had to withstand the conditions in space for three to four months, only to be destroyed within minutes or hours at their destination. Many of them landed perfectly on rugged basalt slabs, withstood temperatures of over 460 degrees Celsius and a pressure almost 100 times higher than on Earth, defied an atmosphere of carbon dioxide and sulfuric acid, and often remained active for more than an hour. It seems almost unbelievable that it was possible to maintain radio contact, transmit photos, and send data under these harsh conditions. Venera 13 even recorded sounds, but time and conditions left the probes no chance. After just a few hours, their systems were destroyed. Has anything remained of the probes to this day? And could we see the last remnants of these technological marvels? Probably not. Experts suspect that the probes have long since decomposed more than four decades later. If you stood at their landing sites today, you probably wouldn't see much. Perhaps a few fragments deformed by pressure would still be lying around here and there. If the Titanic, a colossus of steel and iron, has almost completely decomposed underwater within 100 years, we really have to assume that not much remains of the approximately 2.5 meter long Venera probes in the furnace of Venus. Unfortunately, the landing sites of the Venera probes can never be directly investigated by today's space probes or orbiters. The main reason for this is Venus's dense atmosphere, which is enveloped by an impenetrable cloud cover of sulfuric acid. This layer reflects almost all visible light and prevents cameras from capturing the surface. Even radar images provided by NASA's Magellan probe in the 1990s only showed a few extremely large structures. Under these conditions, it's virtually impossible to detect small objects measuring just a few meters in size. Even if high-performance cameras or a new generation of telescopes could look at the surface, the question of whether any visible remains of the Venera probes actually exist still lingers. It's likely that even at the exact landing sites and at top resolution, nothing of the probes would be visible. Aliens, microbes, and scorpions? What did the images really show? There were wild rumors about what could really be seen in some of the images from the Venera mission. Russian researcher Leonid Kasanfomalidi once claimed that scorpion-like creatures could be seen in the photos from Venera 13. Kasanfomalidi was not without influence, and so there were one or two official statements regarding his claims. It was claimed that the scorpions were technical artifacts, and counter-evidence was even provided. 
But the researcher said that the images he had seen were completely different and were being kept under wraps. Further suspicions spoke of shadows of curious creatures or small aliens romping between basalt slabs. The claims have not yet been proven, but we cannot rule out the possibility that there were images that were not shared with the public. In recent years, traces of phosphine and ammonia in the atmosphere of Venus have caused a stir. On Earth, such gases are produced almost exclusively by biological processes. So could microbes be floating in the clouds of Venus and be surviving evidence that there was once life on Venus? The idea sounds like science fiction, but it's being seriously discussed. In a few years, NASA's Da Vinci probe will dive directly through the atmosphere, and ESA is preparing the Envision mission to map the surface of Venus again with radar. India is working on Chakrayan-1, and even smaller projects such as Rocket Lab want to search for traces of life in the Venusian clouds. Click the subscribe button now. The best videos are yet to come.